partnership to strengthen our fight against COVID-19 and increased business opportunities, plus learning about the medicinal properties of our indigenous plants. All that and more inside today's edition of Jamaica Magazine. I'm Adrian Atkinson. Hurricanes can strike at any time. In the event of one, be prepared to act quickly. If a hurricane watch or warning has been issued, review your home disaster response plan. Map out likely routes to evacuate if your home is at risk and confirm with relatives or friends you plan to stay with. Also, confirm the location of the nearest shelter. Check your emergency supplies and restock if necessary. Remember, disasters do happen, so be prepared. Government has received 200 million yen or 262 million Jamaican dollars in grant support to purchase medical supplies for COVID-19 relief efforts. Let's hear more about how it will benefit our health sector. We are very, very pleased to uh, engage with the Embassy of Japan on the donation of grant aid in the amount of 200 million yen that will allow the government of Jamaica and the Ministry of Health to improve our capacity for managing the caseload that's associated with COVID-19 and specifically the public health facilities across Jamaica with the proceeds of this grant will be able to procure medical equipment that will allow for the uh, treatment of cases and the medical equipment uh, consists of nine bedside x-ray machines, nine B2 portable ultrasound scanners, nine B4 bedside monitors and six B6 defilibrators. In addition, nine units of a D6 X-ray protection screen and 18 units of D7 X-ray protection apron. We're very grateful to the uh, government and the people of Japan uh, for this grant. And of course, this follows on a long tradition of social and economic support from the government of Japan uh, to Jamaica. This support, generously offered from the government of Japan through its economic and social development program, represents another positive development in the long-standing and dynamic relationship between our two countries. As a genuine and reliable friend of Jamaica, Japan continues to demonstrate its commitment to strengthening the bilateral relationship and bonds of cooperation with Jamaica through several programs, and all of these programs are designed to support our country's economic and social growth and development. I'm certain that the medical supplies and equipment obtained with this grant will strengthen the capacity of our public health facilities to treat with co cases of COVID-19 and will make a positive contribution to Jamaica's overall management of the pandemic. In fact, the supplies will undoubtedly make a sustainable, positive impact on our public health infrastructure. Japan is playing a pivotal role in marshalling international cooperation to effectively address the devastating impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. Let me therefore express our sincere appreciation to the government and people of Japan for supporting our effort. Since the onslaught of this pandemic, our embassy has worked closely with Jamaican key authorities and government officials over more than one month's duration to identify how best we could provide our assistance for Jamaica's health system in order to, in order to combat this infectious disease going forward. Our embassy will continue to work with the government of Jamaica in whatever ways we can to effectively contribute to the development efforts of Jamaica. This grant aid, which is designed to provide medical equipment to strengthen the public health sector's capacity and response efforts, 
especially at this time when there's a gradual lifting of restrictions to allow Jamaicans stranded overseas to return home as well as non-nationals to the country is quite timely. Keeping COVID out has been the focus of our in interventions so far. However, the country is now making the transition to living with COVID-19. The health system therefore has to have the ability to sustain the present measures and further to increase its capacity to manage more cases while continuing routine and emergency care for non-COVID patients. This support from the government of Japan will enable the ministry to strengthen its role as we transition. The signing and exchange of notes between both governments underscores the importance of partnerships and international cooperation even during times of crises. Jamaica remains hopeful that as a nation we can fight this disease. This battle requires all hands on deck and countries big and small are in the fight together. Up next, the Urban Development Corporation and JAMPRO have forged a partnership to market the UDC's properties and projects for business development and investment opportunities. The Urban Development Corporation, UDC, has entered into a partnership arrangement that will attract investors to own and operated properties as well as other engagements spearheaded by the agency. This was formalized through the signing of a Memorandum of Understanding MOU with Jamaica Promotions Corporation, JAMPRO, on June 17. UDC's General Manager, Heather Pinnock, and President of JAMPRO, Diane Edwards, welcomed the partnership. We've been really looking for a key government partner to help us to bring all our assets to really maximize on them. And so there is no other agency like Jampo that could support us. We've been having some discussions and we're happy to have signed this MOU because it's really the next step in us truly bringing great projects um, forward to not only the people of Jamaica, but indeed to the whole world. We share UDC's mission and vision to develop Jamaica into a developing country, which is encapsulated in Vision 2030. So we are going to work together to find more investors for UDC properties that they will identify. Under the arrangement, both agencies have agreed to work together to identify programs, undertake initiatives aimed at generating investments, and facilitate business development opportunities in Jamaica. It is anticipated that the MOU will facilitate joint marketing programs, provide support in handling investment queries, simplify attendant processes, and organize targeted business functions intended to provide information investment policies, regimes, and government procedures. We are here to help UDC come together with investors who can really make productive enterprise out of their properties. We have properties that we have been considering, or not only properties, properties and projects, because some of them are projects on our properties to maximize the assets, to look at value added on some of our assets, because it's not just new pro properties, but also getting the most out of the existing properties. Among the key areas of engagement already identified are marketing of eco-development projects such as the Goat Island Wildlife Sanctuary just off Jamaica's south coast at Two Sisters Cave in St. Catherine. Marketing support will also be provided for all UDC land divestments and development requests for proposals, RFPs, among other commercial and investment opportunities. We also want to look at what value added we can do even at our flagship property, Duns River Falls. And so all of this kind of collaboration, we're leaning on Jampro for their strengths to help us to bring forward the best we can for our properties. 
Ms. Pinnock says the UDC looks forward to the positive outcomes for development and investment by local and foreign industry players. Diampo supports both local and international investors, and that's exactly why we're working with them. Meanwhile, Jampro's president, Diane Edwards, says having signed the MOU, both agencies are very keen to activate and operationalize the partnership for work to start very soon. The next order of business is for us now to sit down and have a series of working meetings to decide on which properties we are going to collaborate on and to really take those properties to market and look for investors for those properties. UDC is well known for certain kinds of construction projects and for facilitating certain kinds of tourism projects. But really as an organization, we're looking at the broader, all the extents of options that we have for developing Jamaica. As the leader in urban design and strategic real estate development, the UDC says it can further align its services with the overall objectives of the government, aided by JAMPRO, who are experts in the area of investment. I certainly think that this will do well not only for the performance of both our agencies, but it will redound to the benefit of all of Jamaica. The Urban Development Corporation, making development happen to spur economic growth in Jamaica. To learn more about the work of the Urban Development Corporation, call 876-656-8031 or visit their website at www.udcja.com. You may also follow them on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter and Instagram or visit their information center on the ground floor Kingston Mall, downtown Kingston. Properly carry out a hand rub, apply a palmful of the product in your cupped hand, covering all surfaces. Rub your hands palm to palm. Rub your right palm over the back of your left hand with interlaced fingers and vice versa. Rub your hands palm to palm with fingers interlaced. Rub the back of your fingers to opposing palms with fingers interlocked. Rotationally rub backwards and forwards the clasped fingers of your right hand in your left palm and vice versa. Once your hands are dry, they are now safe. Jamaica has thousands of plants, many of which are known for their medicinal properties. Sometimes it's hard to remember them, but the Natural History Museum of Jamaica makes that so much easier. Necessity is the mother of invention, and we had to find a way to survive. And so for the plants, the natural gift of the Creator, we could rely on it to guide us into what we needed to do. I didn't know about Fenzik and your pharmaceutical things. I know about bush, bush. So if I had a headache, I knew as a child that I should use the leaves of three mackerel bush and a piece of cloth and tie it on my head and the pain would go. The use of herbs as medicine. While this age-old practice has been overlooked by many, the Institute of Jamaica saw it fitting to mount an exhibition on medicinal plants of Jamaica and their uses, bringing to the present the medicinal habits used in the past. So at least 330 plants have been found growing in Jamaica, have been identified as having medicinal value. Of that 334, at least 193 have been assessed for their biochemical activities and 23 of those have, are actually endemic plants. Not every plant, though in its natural form is good, is accessible to everybody. And uh, knowing the information about the plant and wanting to get that into the hands of the people, some of our scientists have begun to study extensively some of these plants to see how they can be formulated in such a way so that they can be packaged and be accessible to the public. You just don't wake up and say, Eureka, I have found it. 
they would have learned from the people in the community what plants were used for what purpose. So you, you, you know all those things in your, in your childhood because they were continually using the plants of nature to assist in what they were doing. Ever since I was a child, my mommy always said me to break a piece of bush to make tea if the tea bag ran out. But what was I getting out of it? I had no clue. And sometimes people say it worked, some other people say it didn't work. So that's why I really did the research to find out if these plants actually work. So we started only making butter brush, which is also known as Calistemon viminalis. And then we broadened and we focused on lemongrass, we focused on most of the herbs that are used by native Jamaicans to cure different ailments. In addition to the showcase, students from the Dunrobin, Chetola Park and the Rollington Town Primary Schools were scientists for a day as they participated in one of the institution's monthly and afternoon with a scientist sessions. Modeled around the Ministry of Education's academic calendar, the mandate of the program is to expose students to and encourage an appreciation for different disciplines of science through fun-filled scientific activities. I've been promoting entrepreneurship, especially in the medicinal plant industry. So I, um, one of the things I do is to give back. So I volunteer even at my children's school. We have an entrepreneurial club where I teach them to make different products from plants. I learned that that they can use herbs to make soap. It was very exciting because I got to see um, what dangerous chemicals they use in it and how is it how is it correct to go on the skin. First we had to put some coconut oil in like a metal cup then we had to put shea butter in it and melt it and then we put it in sodium hydroxide and it was very 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 hot i spilled it a couple times but it was okay just a little clean up and it began to get thick so i was like what should i do now and she was like just mix it it's normal and then we got to put what we want in there i put um charcoal in there and then i made a swirl in the mold. It was a very good experience. I'm so happy our students were able to participate in the activity held here at the Institute where they learn more about medicinal plants. I believe it's very important for them to know that the plants that are found right there in their backyards can be used for healing of ailments that they'll have, the common cold, whatever the, the, the ailment may be. This is what I would like to engage the people in. Go back to their communities and learn how people lived. A generation which came out of slavery could neither read nor write, and yet they were able to contain themselves and to live. We want the students to have some respect for the heritage of this country because it is going to guide you to the future. Support Commission continues to provide support for parents through this very difficult time. Here is another tip. As information continues to be updated, it is important that parents access the information and break it down very simply for children to understand. This will ensure that they feel as if you are in control. They will be inspired by your own confidence. They will feel protected and cared for. Being deaf is certainly not a limitation to mastering the art of dancing. Watch now as we share with you the stories of three exceptional dance students who move to silent tunes with rhythmic grace. There's a sort of purposeful selection of the sequence in these human movements. 
The symbolic significance of hands massaging the air and feet beating to the vibrations of songs. They are focused, energized, ready, and raring to go. If you think about it, they are just like you and I. Well, of course, that's if you can dance. But one thing might be different. I've been there for 23 years, and I've been dancing for 10 years. I've been there for 21 years, and I've been dancing for 14 years. So I've been hard of hearing ever since I was born, until now. And I've been dancing for 16 years. Yes, persons like Christoph, Kimberly, and Damani dance. And despite nature's act of removing a seemingly valuable aspect of their senses, these three are pursuing a certificate in dance at the Edna Manley College of the Visual and Performing Arts, but not without some challenges. Well, my experience here at first, when the three of us just arrived, we were a bit awkward in terms of communicating but then we were able to learn from each other, learning from the hearing students, and we were able to... We had issues as well with the rhythm, keeping up with the rhythm at all times, but then we were eventually able to catch up and we started to improve gradually. So for me, my main issue is timing. So I tried to work along closely with the other students in the class and the teacher as well. And then eventually I'm able to catch up with the timing in terms of the music. So my challenge during class, it's really to ensure that my body is moving with the timing and the music. Deaf dancers do move on the beat and in one accord with the rhythm. But the surprising element in this for most persons is just how are they able to, or even why did they choose dance? I hear a little of the music and I can feel the vibration on the floor as well. So it's not that bad for me. So I use that method throughout. With his sense of touch heightened through his loss of hearing, Damani can interpret the music through the vibrations he feels. Deaf dancers are visual learners, so for them, their instructors sign the moves or the counts. While other dancers are busy remembering the details of the moves, those like Damani, Kimberly and Christoph are counting, keeping time, and watching keenly what their hearing pairs are doing so they can interpret the steps. So I chose to study dancing because dancing is my life. It's my passion ever since. So I want to learn more and more about dancing. I don't want to give up. I don't want to stop. I want to continue. because my goal is to become a dancer in the future. So when I'm finished at Endermani College, I want to become a dancer and I want to perform around the world. So my goal is to become a dance teacher so that I can empower younger deaf children who really love dancing and empower them so that they can you know, be as good as I am, it's their turn. But for acting dean at the School of Dance, being deaf is not the biggest obstacle for becoming a great dancer. I don't want to describe what we have as challenges. I want to describe them as opportunities to learn. What fundamental to dance is the ability to demonstrate and for the dancer to use their eyes and observe and learn the experience in a visual way and then demonstrate what it is that they have been taught. I think one of the interesting things about the deaf students is that their other senses are heightened and so they can, they're able to access the information in other ways um, and quite differently from the hearing students. So it's very interesting to see the learning dynamics, but the end result and the objective or the learning outcome of the experience are still achieved. 
and we're very happy about that because ultimately we want them to succeed. And while for the school it is the first time opening its gates to persons like Christoph, Kimberly and Demani to study dance, they're eager to receive the information and we're inspired by this drive to learn and to succeed. So even though we have an interpreter, the interpreter is also learning from the experience because we have interpreters who have never been in a school environment like this where dance is concerned, so they're also learning new language. It somehow feels as though they've brought more to us. For many of the deaf community, the fear of fitting in lingers. But for Christoph, Kimberly and Mani, dancing is passion-driven and determination-ruled. Well, I hope that what we've done here at the Edna Manley College in terms of opening our doors to three deaf students will encourage others and inspire them to go after their dreams. So I remember in high school, there was a quote that says, I believe I can achieve. I go by that. So in the Bible, it talks about I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I believe I can achieve. Practice good hygiene by washing your hands frequently using soap and water. Here's how you should do it while conserving water. Turn on the tap to wet your hands, then turn off the pipe. Lather your hands and the tap with soap. Turn on the tap and wash your hands, back, front, and in between fingers. Use some of the water to wash off the tap, then turn it off. Dry your hands with disposable hand towels. If you don't have running water, use a hand rub containing 62% or more alcohol. If hand sanitizers are not available, rubbing alcohol, Dettol, white rum, or household bleach will do the trick. And if all else fails, let hand washing and the handling of potable water be a two-person event. Each person will take turns pouring and washing hands with sitting water. Now is a good time to consider installing a tap on your containers to reduce the risk of water contamination. Faucets can be easily attached to drums, buckets, or five-gallon water bottles. And to ensure that the outside of the containers are clean when recapping, disinfect it with hand rub containing alcohol that's 62% or more. The five R's of water conservation are also necessary to practice. Reduce water wastage by investing in water saving devices. Reuse water at least twice before discarding. Replace leaking pipes, faucets, and other plumbing equipment. Recycle wastewater and use it for gardening, car washing, or cleaning of public spaces. And reclaim water through rainwater harvesting. We all must play our part to ensure there's water to combat the coronavirus and stave off prolonged drought. This is where our journey ends, but only for today. Do join us again tomorrow when we'll bring you another informative program. In the meantime, stay connected via our website, jis.gov.jm. And while you're online, send your feedback to jamaicamagazine at jis.gov.jm or via tweet at JIS News. On behalf of the entire production crew, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Do take care. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica. Jamaica.